Tight Talk with Mike Lee. Tonight, my guests are Kennard Wright, who's asked, demanded to be called not my trusty sidekick. He's just a guy, I guess. Andy Wynn. Anthony Wynn. Anthony Wynn from the Texas Asian Republican Assembly. Yes. And also, where else you work, Andy? Uh, I work at the Soul Systems, and I'm also precinct chair of 161. That's in the Republican Party, is that correct? Yes. I'm and me. That, that always irate, revolutionary guy. Power to the people. Republican Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to you guys, have a little talk to you guys about this election that just occurred. <coughs> How do you feel about that, Kennard? Um, Were you surprised? Did you expect, did you expect it? Not, well, yeah, I think how, I guess how I feel is that regardless of uh, if you voted for him or not, it's just an opportunity for, um, for change. And if you expect a government that's more responsive, that meets your needs, that uh, isn't going to be keen to special interests, I think this is your time to, you know, keep your, make sure your voice is heard and, um, and frankly, just be out there. I, I don't look at any candidate for the president elect is perfect. But I look at them as kind of like um, they're a vehicle or they're a conduit. And so um, I think it's an opportunity for change. I just think people have to recognize that the things that we have in common instead of the who we like and don't like. Have you talked to very many, very many people from the African community about, the, about this election? Well, we do have Africans at my church. Uh, but uh, the African Americans, I'm being facetious. Um, people in general are mad. Uh, people are upset. Um, people, um, I think, are turning into obstructionists in the sense that people are saying, like, well, the, we, we're going to obstruct him like they did Obama. And um, I never agreed with everything the Republicans did to obstruct Obama because I think if, if, you, uh, if you have good ideas, you let the ideas go up or down and you vote them in or out. But now the people that decried one thing are basically saying that they're going to do the same thing. Like, well, wait a minute, are you a person of integrity or not? People are, are wishing the man ill harm. People are talking about all kinds of things. I'm not saying that he's a perfect man again, but people are just upset, and I think it's um, like any other group of people. They're just, um, we're just emotional. And, and if, you, if you separate the emotion out from what you like, you say, oh, campaign finance reform. Oh, that's a great thing. Oh, term limits. Oh, that's a great thing. Instead of I don't like him, he said this about something, something, something. Look at the issues. Yeah, like, yeah. dude, like, for real, did we, are we in third grade, or can we actually get, can we actually make some kind of uh, uh, determination? Yeah, look at the issues. Look at where you can work together. You, know, you, you look at his rhetoric and his, his, re his way he speaks. Yeah, sometimes he doesn't <laughs> say the right thing. He's not a politician. Trump says it how he, how he sees it. And mm -hmm. Sometimes he doesn't say it very well, but uh, I think he means well, and uh, he means to do uh, good for the country. So I, I, I'm going to give him a chance. You know, I, I was reluctant. Um, uh, well, initially, when Trump came out, I was on vacation in Yosemite with my wife. And when he came out with his speech, I remember coming down the escalator and, and saying his, uh, his spiel about Mexicans are rapists and murderers and some, I guess, are good people. And, but I was there with my wife, and she's Mexican. And we thought, well, you know, here's a businessman, successful, you know, non-politician. I could support a guy like this, but as his campaign went on and on, and the media started portraying him as this racist, egomaniac, unsuccessful businessman, you know, I kind of got caught up with, well, is this the kind of leader that we wanted? And, and my wife, she was just like, no, she couldn't support him at all, even though she's been a lifelong conservative, her family has always voted conservative. They're from East Texas. And for the first time ever, she decided she couldn't do it. She, she had to vote for Hillary. And she's going to split ticket, vote conservative on the rest of the ballot. But she wasn't going to vote for this man that had said so many, in her mind, demeaning things to Mexicans. And I understood that. I understood her, her position. And as the polls came out, he saw that he wasn't winning. He was never winning in any of the polls. He never had <laughs> more than 40% right up until Election Day. And then when the Access Hollywood video came out and he said all of, the, all of this, you know, locker room talk. That's what I called it. And, and, you know, I went to college. I was in the fraternity. And guys, you know, as guys, guys talk like guys sometimes. You know, I would never use that language. 
Um, so I can understand how people could be offended, but it's just two guys talking. And but I thought it was going to be the end of him. Um, mm -hmm. But he was able to persevere, push through that, and win in the Rust Belt state. I'm mm -hmm. I'm from a Rust Belt state. I, I came from Michigan before. I lived in Texas. I lived in New York before that. And in Michigan, it's automotive country. And in automotive country, they saw jobs leaving Michigan, going to Mexico. So when Trump was talking about his policies on trade, he's speaking to the people in Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, they've seen that. So I could see how that he took Michigan um, and Pennsylvania and mm -hmm. Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm pleasantly surprised. You know, I think, I think if we give him a chance, you know, he is, you know, it's debatable if he's a successful businessman, but it seems like he's doing all right. Um, so hopefully he surrounds himself by good people. They make good decisions. They advise him well and he'll do great countries. I'm glad for the Supreme Court will be saved as long as he appoints people that he says that he will. And, um, and, and that'll be the, the, the however you want to call it, uh, the cabinet's telling that the SCOTUS support, uh, appointments are going to be the, right there. You'll know exactly where he's coming from. Yep. As soon as he nominates whoever he, he is, you'll know very quickly if left, right, or in between. And I, I was worried initially because there was media reports that he was um, pro-abortion, pro-choice, and he, he's been on record and then he changed his mind. So you're always wondering, <laughs> where does he really lie? Nobody really knows, mm -hmm. but he, he, said, he gave his list, and let's hope he sticks to his word and appoints conservative, strict constitutionalists. Mm -hmm. you know, we have a constitution, we should abide by it. Judges should judge the law, we shouldn't make up the laws, um, and I, I think we gotta give him a chance. Well, I feel, uh, in a sense, vindicated because mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm very upfront with my opinions. And if you look at my Facebook page, you see I almost argue with a lot of people, but none of my friends have unfriended me. Mm. They should. I've unfriended some people. My brother did unfriended me. <laughs> my, really? my wife unfriended a lot of Trump supporters. She said she was tired of seeing it. She's really disgusted. By it. And she said, if, if you, people are going to talk about it, she unfriended them. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are people in the Latino community that just can't get over his rhetoric. Mm -hmm. And I try to tell her, well, I can't talk about it anymore with her because it's such a sensitive topic um, that I just have to avoid it <laughs> right now. When Trump came here, I, we, were, we were on CNN, on CNN Speech Watch. I was there. You, you, you were on the news. I was just sitting there. I was on the news. I, I was at the Hannity so. show when Wasn't he came you here. Wasn't you and somebody else? I know I said that, you know, everybody's getting all upset about what Trump says. And I just simply said, I don't care what Trump or any other white man says. I got to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, my thing is my political leaning is determined by I do that on principle, not personally, but not personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Republican principles. At one point they were saying he wasn't a Republican, he did this with the Democrats, he did that. As a lawyer, I realized that a businessman has to play it safe, usually. They play both sides. That's what, that's what happens. But I, um, I guess I looked at things sometimes in biblical terms. And he was saying stuff and doing all this stuff. But I, may, I bet someone $100 that he would win when he got in. Because that's just what I did. Mm -hmm. But then the, the more the situation developed, it seemed to me he said a lot of things that were unpopular, and my baby brother, who's a diehard liberal, reminded me of every one of them every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I look at a man, yeah, I look at things in a funny kind of way, maybe. I say, and my thing was, God can do anything he wants with whomever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. Mm -hmm. That's just how it goes with me. Now I know that David had his Bathsheba, and people that, 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 that are discussing the Bibles, very few of them are perfect. There's something wrong with all of them. Mm. Jesus has a what? A, a, a prostitute in his lineage. So, you know, I, I looked at things like that, and what really what happened to me, I was in Houston pumping gas. And this lady had a car full of ch kids, and I had some children's books that are conservative angle children's books. And I said, 
ma'am, uh, you might want your kids to read something, something like this. And she says to me, I don't discuss politics with anybody. I say, yes, ma'am. I say, I say, my name is Mike Lee. I'm with Travis County Republican Party. I gave her my card, and she opened up like, like I had me a brand new friend. She assumed that you'd be a Democrat. And, and, I, and I, told, I, to, I told my wife, I told my wife, I said, I said Nathan, Nady, Trump going to win. Mm. I told her, I said, it's going to be some white people come out and vote like they never seen. Yeah. You know, the, um, the pastor of my church told us, and I forgot, uh, it's on tape, but that he would win. But it's like you said, Saul was not a perfect man. He killed people. He killed John's followers. <laughs> Moses was a stutterer and didn't think he could much do nothing. You know, Jesus, I disagree on that because, you know, but, but the whole point is, like, he can use anyone. He used a, 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 a excuse me, a ass's jawbone one time for something, I think, if I remember right. So the point is, is not that they're perfect men, um, you know, Sam, uh, rather, uh, Saul, anyone. It's just a matter of, like, anyone that's, like I said, it can be a vehicle to change. Um, and a lot of people, at least Christian folk, um, I like most people, you get caught up in how you feel versus like, okay, well, no, doesn't the word say this? And even if you're not a Christian, do, you know, was Patton perfect? No, he was a cussing fool. You know, was Kennedy perfect? No, he had a little something on the side that wasn't, he wasn't supposed to be doing. Was LBJ perfect? No, he had it. So the, the people that have facilitated the great, Churchill wasn't perfect either. So even if you're a non-believer, which is your, your right, the people that have done the most are not always people that are perfect. I'm not looking for the man to be a saint. I'm looking for the man to facilitate change. I'm looking for the man to make sure the government works the way it has to. And I think um, people need to stop arguing as much, maybe need to stop marching as much, unless you're marching over to your representative's house saying, hey, I want term limits. Hey, I want to make sure lobbyists can't stay in, uh, can't, you can't be a lobbyist for 10 years, uh, whatever. You know, t if you're going to march and you're going to have a problem with them, fine. But again, find something that you're going to work with, because this is the, even if I was was liberal, this is the opportunity you have to have a government that maybe works for you. This is the opportunity. You weren't going to get it if she had won. It would, it would, I mean, this wasn't going to happen. But the point is, however you see it, this is your chance to change something. You know, suck it up, put on your big boy pants, and let's go and get take care of this. Because if we don't stand up for what we need, the government, you need to continue to facilitate some pressure. But you need to, like like my, Mr. Wynn, Anthony said, rather, you need to make sure you get the person a chance. This man hadn't even gotten to, he hadn't gotten to January 1st. And they already, I'm like, really? The man's not even there yet. His mm -hmm. hand's not on the Bible or whatever. Like, hold on. Hold him accountable. You know, I, I, didn't, I don't necessarily like uh, Jeff Sessions as attorney general, not because he's not a great scholar. Maybe he can be pressed. If you can be pressed, you might overreact. But you know what? I'm going to give you a chance because you have, you have a chance to go ahead and put in your cabinet. You don't do, let the, give the man a chance. I don't, I don't care if I they like him. This isn't a party in third grade. This is about the uh, country. This is about the direction of a country. This isn't about a high school prom or a king contest. I don't have to like him. I don't have to like him. People didn't like LBJ, did they? Did people? FDR had a problem. He was had a impro kind of a little thing going on with a cousin. Well, so, well, but they were great men. Well, to me, people get confused about. They think that what they feel is what they should go. Whoa. That's how and, my and, wife and, is. And she just doesn't not, like not him. And I asked her, what position don't you like? And she, well, she's like, he's just an <laughs> asshole. He's just a scumbag. I'm like, well, what positions don't you like? And, you know, and that's the question. So in your community, you know, the black community, they say they vote 80%. Democratic, 90%. 90%. This year it was a little bit less, but yeah. bit why less. is it? What issue is it? that Trump has that, that permeates the culture that mm. such, uh, what, what do they see? Well, he, ha mm. he has affiliations with people who are on the far right. Yeah, and remember, just to be facetious, my grandfather's Filipino, so I got a little bit on Asian too, but no, <laughs> which, is, which is true, which is true. I'm being facetious. No, he was, um, but, but the, I think the, the, the problem is, is that people, um, uh, people are associating, like you said, what they like and can't always articulate a policy position or if you're a believer, can't articulate scripture. Like, well, he's not very Christian. Well, why don't you look over here at this issue um, on the Democratic side or whatever. The, the point is, is I think people are reacting from an emotional standpoint like any other person, your wife, my sister, whomever. 
um, people are like, well, he, he, he didn't, uh, he didn't, um, uh, he, he didn't tell, he, he, you know, he, there was violence at his rallies. And well, well, some of that violence was like, you know, instigated, and they don't want to listen to that. Mm -hmm. I think people just are entrenched. People, black people, like any other community, are very loyal to the things they hold dear. And just because you're loyal to it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you. It just means you're loyal. I think people oftentimes don't have poly positions, and the ones that they have, you know, like, well, he's not going to do anything for black people. He shouldn't, he shouldn't tell us we ain't got nothing to lose. Well, um, and I was telling Mike, in 1963, Malcolm X spoke, and Malcolm X said the greatest threat to a black person was an, a white liberal. And that's not to say anything bad about if you're white or liberal. It's just to say Malcolm was saying, you take your, you take your, fo your, your votes, and whoever articulates or provides a solution towards the problem that you have, that's who you vote for. And if they don't provide over here, you go over you there. Go over there next time. So uh, I'm like, well, hey, hey, people, maybe we should be looking and say, hey, here's the, here are the three policy positions we want. Mm -hmm. What you going to do? But people can't, don't have cohesion. People, are, are, again, they, they react to things. We live in a reactionary country. React to what the media says. Oh, they saw this and I saw this. He said this 15 years ago. Well, what did Hillary do last year? What did Hillary do six months ago? What did, what did so-and-so do six months ago? It doesn't even matter. People, there's not always, they're acting on emotion and the policy positions are not, are not any, dip, weren't, in some case, weren't always that bad. Yeah, what, what Democratic president, what, what have they done for you? I mean, I well, look back. Unfortunately, many black people are really trained to be Democrats. Why, you, if you ask them, why, why are you Democrat? My grandmama was, my mama was, and granddaddy and all that. You can't say, I'm a Democrat. If you put a, a fill, say, I'm a Democrat because 99% of them probably couldn't fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's just passed down to them. Yeah. And, and do they know the history of the Democratic Party? That Some of them. They know. were the slave owners. I mean, Lincoln freed the slaves. He was a Republican. I read a, I funny, mean, thing. I read a funny thing uh, uh, yesterday. See, the Democrats hadn't been this mad since Republicans freed the slaves. Uh, to <laughs> some extent. But, but I think if people just go back and are self-aware, then you'll understand just a little bit uh, about your history, about you, all you have to do is go watch the, the movie, The Free State of Jones. Yeah, and in one part of the movie, they say, a whole bunch of black folk walking in to vote Republican. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole bunch of white folk that say, no, you ain't. Mm -hmm. And so they and they had uh, the de they had right. Democrat and they had Republican. Democrats used to be like the Whigs or something like that. So the mm -hmm. whole point is, is like, again, not to live in the past, but even uh, not even to say that um, the Great Society was not intended to be a good thing. But okay, outside of the people that are most indigent or the most needy, what have you gotten as a collective from from from, from, in, in, from any party in the last thirty years? So even if you look at it in a net way and say, well, the Republicans ain't done nothing. Democrats ain't done nothing. Okay, well, then, then my lightning fast, slow mind says, okay, well, that means I have to be, I have to, I have to be more fluid, or I have to look and, and, and try to get something that's going to um, uh, try to work with someone who's going to articulate my needs. In fact, with the president, if, he, if he's smart, there are certain small things he can do that are real, that are, I think fit with uh, the idea of freedom and, and whatnot, that he could do that actually could help the community. And it may not be popular. It doesn't matter if it's popular. It only matters if it's right. And if you win or lose, mm -hmm. fine. But it's, I think George Bush said at one time, you know, if I lose, I'm okay with going home. So you know what? If you don't like him, plan to vote him out of office. But in the meantime, <coughs> let's get to work. Let's get to work. We got mm -hmm. stuff to do. And just arguing about who you don't like, that's what children do. None of If you're 18, that means you're an adult. So you need to act like an adult. Yeah, I, I think Trump is going to do great things. Um, sometimes it takes a change agent. And, and Trump might be that person. I, I came to this country in, in 1975 during the Vietnam War, at the end of the Vietnam War. Um, Nixon was the president, a Republican, mm -hmm. and he invited Vietnamese immigrants into the country to assimilate, settle in, and all of my family have voted conservative um, ever since. And I didn't know that. Um, my father recently passed away this year too in May so we were reunited and we were talking about the elections and they were all like who are we gonna vote for we can't vote for this Trump and I was like what do you mean well we always vote Republican and now they were like you know they couldn't get over his his rhetoric and his talk and they were they were torn but 
they've always been conservative and they wanted to vote conservative and as time goes on i think the media the democrats have taken over the media yeah, and have been able to portray them as the party of the immigrants um, whether it's true or not even though they've only used it as a political issue um, Nixon allowed the Vietnamese to come in. Reagan gave amnesty mm -hmm. to the Latinos in the 80s. So the Bracero, right. something like that? Yeah. yeah, and since the 80s, what have the Democrats done besides talk about immigration? They haven't done anything. They've always used it as a wedge issue. They've always presented bills that were too extreme mm -hmm. to the point that they can never get passed. So we, we, the last time we had big changes in, in immigration policy was Reagan and Nixon, both Republicans. The last time a Democrat did anything was FDR. What did he do? He had internment camps for Japanese Americans, mm. a Democrat. See, Democrats, you know, they want to control people. They want to control your lives. And when something bad happens, they overreact and they do things like internment camps. But they haven't done anything for any immigrants, any minorities that I've seen. It's only Republicans that actually are actionable to what their words are, and they actually get things done. So mm. I'm, I'm really hoping that Trump turns it around and can really get stuff done when the political system hasn't gotten anything done in a long time. And what impresses me is that I believe that a man who can talk to the far right and talk to a Don King or a, a criminal, and a man who can talk to both of them would have a better chance than, than a man who won't talk to this guy over here. I oh, won't talk to this guy. Won't, <coughs> to the far, won't talk to the far right. Mm -hmm. Hear what they got to say. You talking about being inclusive? Include them too. Well, I think. Um, but you only include if you agree. Well, that's because of how we live. I had one uh, friend from high, uh, college who actually different uh, because she's kind of being mean. We can disagree, but if you're going to be mean and ugly, then I'm okay. You know, see you at the reunion. You know. Um, but the point is, is that she was like, well, he's not going to do nothing. And we made the point about God. And I said, did you realize some of the best policies that we've had in the country, like when Clinton had to come towards the center to the right, when the yeah. Republicans got control, when people had to work together? Oh, mm -hmm. see, they didn't have nothing to say with that. I'm not saying that you don't maintain your position, that you don't maintain your values, but you know what? Okay, okay, let's, the, let's take the best ideas that are conservative, and if you have any good ideas being liberal or moderate, let's try to find a way to build, at least where we can, consensus, like immigration, mm -hmm. You could find some consensus. Can everybody become a citizen? No, you can't. Can some people that have been here a while and done something? Maybe you can. But you know what? At the end of the day, stop stop trying to get your your people elected. Stop trying to get your people elected. I can, uh, you know, but let's try to get something done. Because at the end of the day, it's like if you want the government to meet, if you want the government to respond to you, you have to understand this is like, this is like, a, um, and you're a lawyer, I'm not an attorney, um, but you have to negotiate something. Mm -hmm. And how do we negotiate <coughs> the best thing? Well, he's going to appeal Obamacare. Okay, well, yeah, ho hopefully. Okay, but what, what parts of Obamacare actually, the, the pre-existing conditions, c which could have been on its own thing, how do we find a way to work together? Not in all instances, but in some of them, because if you don't make sure Congress does what's right, it doesn't matter if he mm -hmm. proposes something to, uh, as a legislative agenda. It doesn't even matter necessarily if he gets somebody in the Congress to sponsor it. So if you really want something to happen, you better be understand how the dynamics of power work. You better understand that if you want it to change, you need to make sure that dude, Democrat or Republican, knows that you're going to vote that sucker out if he doesn't act mm -hmm. right. And so while people are bickering, I don't like him, black, Mexican, Indian, Bangladeshi, or whomever, you know what? Understand how things work. Understand how Congress works. He may be an agent of change, but if you don't have, like, one chemical agent mixing with another, Mm -hmm. At the proper ratio, well, okay, you, you're going to have a reaction, but it might not be the one that's combustible <laughs> to what you, you get what you yeah. want. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, people, dude, look, I'm a political science major. I went to graduate school, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Look, let's get something done. Sorry you lost, which, by the way, uh, excuse me, so let me say this. There was a song from the 90s called Punks Jump Up to Get Beat Down by a group <laughs> called Poor Righteous Teachers. And I said, well, see, I told y'all this could happen. You jumped up, you got beat down. Uh, but it goes to what you said. People in the Rust Belt, people in different places, small margin of people wanted to, not small, but enough people want to change. Donald and Bernie touched into the same thing, although in different ways. People want change. 
the people that voted for him, they're not racist. No, not most of them. Some of them, but so, some are Democrats. Look, yeah. where, look where we live. Uh, but, you know, hey, let's get, this, let, let's, let's get this started. Let's get this started the right way. Criticize, I'll criticize him like last year if he does something wrong. But at the same time, if you have the integrity to want, if you say you have integrity to want things to work right, do you need to have, have integrity and give him a chance to have integrity and stand up for what you believe in, in terms of se telling your congressmen and your senate, you know, your congress uh, people as to what you want? I'm sorry, it took a long time. This is good. <laughs> I'm not running for nothing. No, no. Well, you know, <laughs> Hillary, <laughs> President. Hillary tried to play it safe. You know, she didn't really have a message. She, she avoided all She did. She had one message. Donald is bad. Well, she was <laughs> trying to <laughs> stay out of the way and uh, be scared. Hope. But, you know, she got the candidate that she wanted. Mm -hmm. um, right. We got the cl candidate that we wanted. And, mm -hmm. you know, the most enthusiastic <laughs> candidate won. I mean, yep. and uh, I'm a precinct chair, and I block walk. I, I look at the list of voters. I went to some traditionally Democratic houses that voted for Republican, and I knew they voted Democratic, but they crossed over just to get the weaker candidate in. And now, you know, I'm going to go back out really? there. Um, yep. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Because yep. <coughs> I told James Dick, I said, there were more people that voted in our primary than ever before. Mm -hmm. I said, James, I think a lot of those people voted. Democrats, and they want to get Morrow in there, or rather you out mm -hmm. and Morrow in, mm -hmm. and get Trump in, so it'd be Hillary and Trump. <coughs> and I said, and I was thinking, like, be careful what you ask for. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can look at the data. There were a lot of new people. You know, there was a bunch of guys that I met that were like 20, like never voted before, and there were definitely those people. But there were a lot of longtime Democrats. And some polls said it was like 8% that uh, came out and wanted to get Trump in, and now they're probably regretting that. That's uh, in the prim at the time of the primary. Yeah, at the primary. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I heard yeah. someone say you don't, you don't necessarily, uh, in terms of his temperament, um, and I don't, I, I don't necessarily, he wasn't my first choice either, but, you know, you don't want someone who can't take a hit, who can't stand up for you to fight for change. Yeah. Unfortunately, Churchill, for instance, was a bugger. He was a <laughs> bugger. But what, what did he do? He stood, he stood in the face of the blitzkrieg. He stood in the face of different things in this country. And the whole point is, is you, you need someone who you, you know is going to, who, who can fight, who can fight in the ballroom, who can fight in the alley in, 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 a, in a, a euphemistic way. You need someone like uh -huh. a bulldog because the, whatever you, however you feel, whatever side you're on, this is, this is real. Uh, where we're at in the world, what we have in the country, the problems we face, these are real. And you, you, you don't necessarily need a man or woman that's perfect. You need someone that's determined, someone that's going to stand up for something, someone that's going to fight for you. And, and, and I think, however you want to see it, he, he was clearly the, 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 the better of the two. Well, I, I, was, uh, I was committed to him at first, but... Uh, after the primary, you know, you had all, what, 16 different candidates? Yep. <laughs> if he beat all, if, 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 if he came out on top, that's who I'm going with. Because my thing was, as I, as I was going to go with the party, said, we, we're not sure he's a conservative, he's not conservative enough. Just, he won. So give well, that up. But he only won with... 45% yeah, of the vote with, with, with the plurality. So most Republicans did vote for Someone. somebody else. And, and what, what's interesting is he beat Hillary, but imagine we had a Marco Rubio in there or a Jeb Bush. Right. You know, how much bigger our victory would have been if Trump was able to um, seal the deal. Mm. And Hillary's such a weak candidate. <coughs> I think the, the GP did this to themselves. You know, when they saw Hillary as a candidate, they knew that she was unpopular. And so everybody, all these senators, all these governors exactly. said, I'm going to run for president. I'm gonna, you know, if I can win the primary, I'm going to be president. And they were right. Any of them. Everybody the, wanted that. They, yeah, everybody and they, and they, wanted and that. And they hung on too long, too. Yeah, they hung on but, way but, too long. But you know, the funny thing is about that, they didn't like him. He was a threat, and he is a threat to many people's perception of power and influence. And if you were, if you really didn't want him, as soon as you saw, you you, you should have, you, you well, I guess I shouldn't say this, but you would have wanted less people in the, in in the lineup, yeah. you know. So it's like, okay, well, you guys are really, uh, did somebody pay someone to like make a strategic mistake 
But the cool thing is, for the benefit of the public, is that that mistake could actually work out to the benefit mm -hmm. of us. Uh -huh. Well, I think I kind of felt he stole the primary because he had a TV show. And I watched The Apprentice, mm -hmm. and that show had 20 million v viewers. You know how many voted in the primary, Republican primary? 14 million. So if he took 60% of people that watch his show, mm -hmm. come out to the primary where only 30 million people voted, he got 14 million, everybody else took 17 million and spread it out. You know, I felt like, okay, he stole the primary because he had a popular show, but in the general election, mm -hmm. it's 120 million. I really didn't think he was gonna win. You know, I thought his base was, you know, 15 million people that watched his show. Mm -hmm. And surprise, surprise. But that's the thing. The people that you know? voted, there was a guy, I forget his name, I think his last name was Lynch, who about five days of the election showed how he could win uh, and, and showed actually how he could crush her. And I think I posted it on Facebook or whatever, but the point of it was is that, you know, it's the, a lot of times as people of color, we talk and understand about being disenfranchised, about being uh, people have experienced discrimination uh, and, and, and inhibition. Things have happened to prohibit you from being involved in the constitutional process. But there are a lot of other people in general who realize they were disenfranchised, at least in the sense that the process wasn't working for them or the process nobody was listening to them. And I remember hearing a lady on NPR, I don't know what, what state she's from, she was a, a waitress somewhere, and she was like, well, I've never voted before, but I'm voting this way, and I'm voting for Trump. Well, guess what? Uh, you, certain people broke for him. Mm -hmm. I've had libertarian friends who generally, who say, you know what, one just hyped Trump all over his Facebook page. What? Mm -hmm. There are people that were disenfranchised, that felt neglected, that felt their interest was not being met. And it didn't necessarily need to be 29%. That's one, what, 3% basically caught, he won a lot of states on two to three, what, two to 4% of yeah. the vote. Well, That's all you need to break. Like 1%, yeah. Exactly. So. I'll, at the end of the day, it, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not this big political consultant, although, I don't know, you know, I, I take the money. I think otherwise. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, <laughs> I know, but, you know, but the point of it is, you are, instead of showing people, talking to people like they're idiots, instead of talking to them, scaring the crap out of them, even though I didn't like Hillary, don't scare, all you got to do is put, all you got to do is put people, put the information in front of people, show people that you actually, here's what I care about, or rather, here's what you care about, here's how I'm gonna meet your problem. And you know what? I don't care if you're a person that has a third grade education, you can understand that one person, you can understand something sometimes. People need to just be upfront and say, this is what I'm gonna do to address this problem. And I think what he did is that he, he was successful in articulating that and it came across. She was just more like, um, you know, kind of aloof, whereas he, even, even if his delivery sucked, Mm -hmm. And like at the Trump rally or whatever, I was saying like every, he made a good point and then he just rambled for like two minutes to like, oh my God, dude, shut up. <laughs> but, you know, the point of it is he showed that he cared. The voters don't want to be BS. The voters don't want you even necessarily, even if, if, even like I'm more conservative, the voters don't want you to, to go into necessarily dogma per se. The voters want you to say, I care about your issue, I'm going to do something. And at this point, if somebody actually does something, you have a political revolution. If you, if you are able to achieve things, and the people that are arguing, well, I don't like him again. Dude, do you realize what we have in front of us? If, if, if he just gets two, the, the, two of the things done, two of the things done, you've effectively changed the whole way the government works. Just two things, the, 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 uh, the lobbyists and the uh, and, and term limits. You've taken all the influence. It doesn't mean people shouldn't have a say, but you mm -hmm. want to make sure it works right for you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he showed people he cared, and that's what people want. They don't want BS. They mm -hmm. just like just like Anthony said. They, you know, you, you showing that they care, and you know what? That's I'm not gonna lie. That that means a lot. Mm -hmm. That means what the Democratic Party says. It doesn't mean Republican mm -hmm. says. Hey, he said he articulated it, mm -hmm. and you know what? He, he was the only one that was successful doing well, it. Well, he was a, he was a showman, and yep. you know, you look at him and Bernie Sanders. Sanders had a lot of enthusiasm too. Both were polar opposites, but both could draw a crowd. And I always wondered, well, how's, how, how do people want to be a socialist? But if you listen to Bernie talk, he excited <laughs> you. He <laughs> exactly. motivated you. And Trump did the same thing on the other political <laughs> spectrum. Exactly. And 
part of being president is you got to be able to convey a message and get people excited and maybe they don't even care what you're saying but if you just show passion with mm -hmm. what you're saying you'll get votes you'll get supporters bernie did it well and trump did it well and he did it well enough that he was able to take this election he brought on you know the the typical conservative voter that might not be able to vote for him he brought in a lot of new voters and with that he he built this coalition very slim but you got to give him credit that he was able to pull it off against all odds against the media that was totally against totally him. Against exactly him. and you know what you talked about about uh the people of color or, or black people i'm still sticking with black people i'm just that we got too many terms going on um but um the point is is that even he did a little bit better than people than other yeah. people had done. I think what about eight, ten percent, something like that, Mike, yeah. something like that. And granted, I him read something that said he got eighteen point four six. I I know I've heard somebody else tell me that who's a, a Republican of Williamson County, but I, I hadn't seen anything yeah. to back it up. You can't. I, I mean, they're based on exit polls, so exactly. you can't be, believe any polls. But it, no. it gives you an indication <laughs> of no. Uh, well, the po the polls, the pundits, and the media took an egg in the face on this one. Well, I, I, heard, I agree, although I heard one guy say, you know, it's within the variance, but depending upon how you ask the question, who you ask the question to, I mean, it, you, could, you, could, you could use the same kind of information and say that it was a toss-up as the same way as, well, Hillary's ahead. Yeah. Well, no, Hillary's ahead by two points, three points. That's well, margin of error. The polls got that right. If you mm. look at the popular vote, Technically. Hillary's going to win by 2%. They're still counting the votes. Yeah. So on the popular <laughs> vote, they were correct. But... Polls only only count less than 0.1% of the vote. Exactly. And they're trying to extrapolate that to 120 million. You can't you can't be when when it's a 50-50 race, it can go either way. It's a coin mm. flip. But where they did get it wrong was the states. They got Michigan mm. wrong. Mm. They got Pennsylvania <coughs> wrong. They got North Florida Carolina and Florida. Florida wrong too. Dave. And they they were way mm. wrong in in Ohio. Almost 10 points in Ohio. I was surprised mm -hmm. at that. I was um, surprised a little bit. Um, so it's, it's, you know, I we can't believe the polls anymore, or they got to do something different when it's when it's that close. I, I, just call it the, the coin flip. <laughs> I haven't believed polls in a long time, but I'll tell you what: if you have a decent economic plan, like uh, I was talking to some guy from high school, he's like, and uh, we talked about this article in NPR, is like uh, about the Rust Belt and the Coal Belt, and he's like, well, I, I don't think you can bring that back, and I was like, well, you know. You know, he, the guy was like, "Well, coal's not coming back." Well, you know, you understand that uh, developing a place economically doesn't just mean you bring coal back. In some places, they could develop a, a vibrant tourism industry. In other places, it could be light manufacturing. I said, uh, and uh, and I and I kind of threw him off a little bit, uh, purposely. Kind of did what what you do, but in a nicer way. I said, "Well, <laughs> maybe they should turn to God. You know, God, I have there from God can turn everything around." And uh, and I remind him of a, um, I have to find the lady's name, is a lady in Pennsylvania who took a family recipe for pretzels. And you know what? She employs a whole lot of people in some county. She's a millionaire. But the whole point is, if, if you go in and, and, and have, um, and I don't think they have this, like there's a community development bro program for cities, right? Uh, I don't, I've never heard of anything like that for any rural area or whatnot. But the point is, if you go in and understand what each area is, what they need, what their spirit is, you can develop some of those areas. If you can go in and begin to do that, again, you, you, you uh, politically speaking, you build, um, and I shouldn't be giving this all away free, but um, <laughs> you build this, uh, you build this, you, you, you build the place up economically, you build voters, but the most important thing that you build, people have life again, people have hope again. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean hope and change and keep hope alive, Jesse Jackson, Obama, the hope and all this. I mean something that's actually that you can <coughs> grab, that you, just somebody's getting a check or somebody is, uh, you know, so the, the point is, is that, you can dev you can do things to bring people in to develop uh, communities, and it doesn't necessarily have to cost a lot of money. But you have to understand, and you have to put for effort. And these are things that don't necessarily cost a lot of money, don't cost a lot of effort. And he could do some really good. He could do some really good things. It'd be it'd be akin to uh, Nixon. St uh, Nixon uh, was the uh, start of the EPA. You would never think Nixon <coughs> did anything for anybody. <coughs> well, you know what? Sometimes people will surprise you, uh, Republicans. Uh, can surprise you or whomever in doing something's right. I had a question for you guys. Sorry. Do you think Obama, Obama's going to pardon Hillary? Go That's a 50-50. Hmm. You think so? I, on the last day, anything's possible. Bill Clinton pardoned hmm. uh, Mark Rich or whoever that was. Yeah. And, yeah I, I mean, know. you know, criminals and find people that were hiding in Switzerland and stuff. 
Um, I don't know. I don't even want to talk about that. I don't think so. You I know, know. The, the, the thing about Obama that I've always respected is he's always tried to keep the Justice Department separate from the executive department. And he's always had a high degree of integrity. You know, so I that would go against everything that he stood for. So I'd like to think that he would not do that. I mean, she hasn't been convicted of anything. She hasn't right. She hasn't been charged. She hasn't been charged Jesse with Jackson anything. is arguing for Jesse this. Jesse Jackson's so. talking about he should pardon. He's a sellout. Oh, I said that <laughs> yeah. on TV. He's a sellout. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't represented me since. So, so Bill Clinton Ever. did a lot of unethical things in his lame duck, <laughs> duck session. But Obama has been a man of integrity, and you know, even though I didn't support him. I always thought that he would make a good president, a good representative for the country, and I was proud of America that they could elect a minority. Um, and you know, we could disagree on policies and issues, but you know, the man never ran on race. He never made race a big issue, and I got to respect him for that. And so he, he's run the office pretty much scandal-free. We haven't really mm. seen too many things like in the Clinton administration. Well, you'll so. never see that again. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> <They're> good. <laughs> uh, uh, although Obama did one thing, at least of black folk, he made race a whole big issue because we sure voted for him a lot. Um, <coughs> I mean, at least in terms of when he would speak to us. And again, this isn't always politically popular because I think people are coming alive as to like, well, other than sentencing guidelines, we ain't really getting nothing. That's about the only thing we got. And our brother's keeper, which is basically like programmed by the men's yeah. and boys conference here in Austin, you know what you know. Mm -hmm. That's not the same old, same old. But um, he did to some extent, and and and, and I still, and I, as a black man, I was proud that that you know. I mean, not that I really supported him, but I was proud that he was there. But at the same time, what did you say when you started? You separate your emotion right. of who you are and how you were raised yeah, from who's going to best you know help you or your country. Um, I think. Um, if you look at it, there's a book I started, I hadn't finished it, by Eric uh, Michael Dyson, and it's uh, it's about Obama, it's about b uh, being b the black presidency, and he's like, well, Obama ran in some respects on uh, in the black community on his blackness, but he never really delivered anything to the community about mm -hmm. that pertained to his blackness. It's almost like he was black, but didn't culturally have the sense of being black as what he does from Ohio or me from Maryland. Um, and so it's like, uh, I don't mean, to, well, I do mean to be critical, uh, but it's just, I think it's reality that it's looking back is that you haven't gotten anything. Um, I've had one friend who used to tell me I was wrong, and I was telling Mike, he came back, and now he's like, yeah, he came back a couple years ago, yeah, he's wrong. And he really, it took people waking up, even people here locally are waking up, n not to say that everyone's all <coughs> bad, but to say, hey, you, have, you, can't, you can't vote for somebody just because they look like you. Now, you might want to. Mm -hmm. But you know, I want to vote for you because yeah. of your values. And if you exactly. if you got polka dots on you, and you know, you got on some mismatching socks, whatever. But what are your values? You know, not not do we do we grow up in the same neighborhood? Are we the same color? Does your wife look like my wife or whatever? What are your values? If you show me your values, if you show me you have integrity, if you show me you have integrity, then we can roll. If you don't show me you have integrity, and you have no values, then that's trash. You throw trash away. Now, respectfully. <coughs> now, what I'm most interested in is Trump j is supposed to present some kind of plan for raising up the situation for the urban areas. Mm. I don't know what it is. I, I just heard there's supposed to be some sort, pl some sort of plan. I'm l waiting to see what that is and to evaluate the p its possibilities of success. Because I think that... Uh, like I said, if a guy can talk to the D.O. Nazis and can talk to Don King, there's a chance. Yeah, I mean, his, his economic policy is kind of hinged on tamping down free trade. You know, he's against NAFTA, he's against TTP. You know, that's something I, I kind of disagree with him on. Um, I've, I work in the manufacturing sector. I've worked in the automotive industry all my life. I've seen jobs from, I lived in Flint, Michigan. And I've seen the jobs mm. leave Flint to go to Mexico, and they aren't coming back. And I don't see how Trump saying, I'm going to put a 80% tariff on a car coming back to America is going to benefit Americans. It takes five years to set up an automotive plant 
in America. Once they shut it down, move it, you can't bring it back overnight. <laughs> so when he uh -huh. says, I'm just going to put the tariff on everything, <coughs> I, th that's not going, I, I don't see how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. I could see if you are living in the Rust Belt, that sounds good. If you're making cars, maybe it, it will happen. But I think he's going to quickly find that the inertia behind that is not going to be really feasible. Once those jobs are gone, they're gone. Maybe he can <coughs> intercept some future plants from moving somehow, but you know we're, we're unfortunately in a global society and we need all the markets. If we believe in free market economies, we have to operate in the free market, which is global. And wherever goods are made cheaper, businesses will go there and you just have to let it. And you have to replace them with something else for the people that are left behind. They can be retrained. But what I've learned is, you know, I started out as a tool and die guy and now I'm a software consultant. I retooled, I relearned, I got to do something. You gotta continue to learn. You can't expect <coughs> to work in a job for 30 years and do the same old thing. And, and especially if you don't have an education, you're just working on the line, you'll, you'll, you'll have to just relearn a new skill. And, and I wish that he would focus on that. You know, we, we talked about education and the other thing. You know, not everybody is going to be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. You know, only 35% of people have college education. What are you gonna do with those other 60%? Mm. There's a lot of jobs for them, mm. you know. Create an education system, a vocational system that trains those people and make those respectable. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody can be an engineer. And, and I hope he focuses on that because j you know, just changing trade policies is yeah, going yeah. to <laughs> wreak havoc <laughs> on our economy. <coughs> yeah. And, and I, I hope he gets to good advisors that, you know, he's a businessman, hopefully he understands that. But th that definitely is something that I disagree with him on. Hey, I, w I would say uh, initially what you said about, um, well, two things is uh, the harder part that I think is important that policy people miss out on, and, um, and I went to policy school for, for whatever reason, is that if you institute a policy without the person being ready, without the person uh, uh, being willing, then the policy or the program may be very immaterial, even if they complete it. Mm -hmm. So the missing, the, 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 the quotient or the part that I don't, that's hard to put in policy is to engage people and like I said earlier, to motivate communities. You know, uh, I'm from Baltimore, great people from Baltimore, they're hard scrabble people, they work, they can match really good, uh, whatever, <laughs> uh, and be poor. Or, but the point is, they're people that are multifaceted, but when you lose hope, when all you think is what's on the block, or when, like there was a teacher in Baltimore recently who was calling, calling the kids out and calling kids, you know, saying, well, that's a dumb and he's gonna get shot. When you live in a, it's, you, when you, when you do a devoid of hope or whatever, then that's important. So that's the thing I think that's probably most important, but the hardest to, to quantify and get a hold of. But the other point is what you said. Um, I used to work in social services, uh, ex-offenders, kids, uh, reentry, and um, and I remember, and I had a sti I had an Obama st stimulus job just for public record. I guess I shouldn't say that a TARP job. <laughs> uh, and and part of what frustrated me, uh, and the money ran out, of course, and I wound up looking <laughs> for another job, but. Um, and the part that frustrated me is that sometimes some of the training that was there was piecemeal training. You would send people the things that you know were not going to benefit them long term, that weren't going to properly retool them. And, uh, and most of my problem was trying to get that person's attitude and their viewpoint mm -hmm. to, to the point to where they could ultimately be successful on their own. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I tried to do. And it, was, it wasn't in the program guideline. It was a mm -hmm. bunch of BS to, as far as they were concerned. Uh, but I, I also knew that some of the a CNA seven eight dollars nine dollars an hour living wage in Austin's fifteen you know all this right and um and I, I got frustrated that I, a lot of the stuff I sent them to wasn't going to help them and they would just some of the people probably forty to fifty percent would be back in in one to two maybe three years needing something else well you have to have job programs that don't just take the theory, don't just take what the business practice is, that, that do exactly what you said, that retool, retrain, and empower. Retool, retrain, where does it go in? It sounds good to retool, retrain, <laughs> three R's. And so that you actually have programs, and uh, uh, my daughter, uh, in, uh, she went from Austin to Round Rock ISD, and I uh, went to the bond committee meeting. I guess I'm on it, even though it's not very good. <laughs> um, I said that, not very good. And but the head of the chamber said something, and it's to your point, and I've said this too, Richard Franklin and I talked about this, 
Rich is a former Democrat. It's like, what's the hell wrong with you people? <laughs> um, and he said they, they're, they're going to develop uh, a HVAC program, uh, possibly with Round Rock ISD, the school district. You know how much HVAC people make? They start off making uh, about 20. So you start off making 42, and you just graduated from high school three years ago. Uh, the whole point is there's a lot of jobs that people are going to need, just like you said, that pay good money when you pay taxes, mm -hmm. and you might be able to actually have a family if you really get lucky. Um, the, 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 it, and, and then the funny thing is, if you if those people sometimes are small business people, right? Those people are what ultimately going to what generate your job. So while you're sitting there worried about GM and all these other guys, which are completely relevant, I like GM. I'll take a nice car, but um, every Michael Dell, the guy who started Hobby Lobby, them dudes ain't finished college. Mm -hmm. Hobby Lobby yeah. is a billion well, dollars, we, billion, billion, we, we, billion we dollars. We need to get away from the assumption that everyone is college material. Yes. Exactly, yep. but the greatest ideas were from people in this century, the last century, quarter century, from people that didn't graduate from college. And, and, uh, and, and the job programs need to reflect that. If you can properly have, make sure your job, your job programs have that, that your small business loans, uh, S SBA stuff is, is bulked up or properly skilled, that you know, if you can do these things, these are things that don't even necessarily cost a lot of money, but they have to be properly done. And I, I would say you, you need to go to the education system in the high school system and start promoting that, you know, recognize that, okay, who's the 30% that will pass college? Because 66% fail college, and what are they gonna do? And they were taught in high school, oh, well, everybody has to go to college. Well, yeah, everybody can go, but if 66% fail out, what are they going to do? If you recognize, well, maybe I can be a, a plumber, a, a, uh, an AC person, License um, a, contra uh, a contractor, a carpenter, early on in high school, maybe they don't have to spend those one or two years going to debt in the college, and now they, mm -hmm. they flunk out and they can't pay it. You know, hey, go into trade and learn that trade. And I think high school needs to retool itself and try to recognize that there's more than one track for people to be successful in society, and it's not always college. And, and recognize that, you know, the college people that want to go to college, yeah, let them go to college. But for the majority that we know is the majority that won't finish college, let's find them another track and, and be more diversified in our, in our high school education than just constantly focusing on everybody has to go to college. Because yeah. it really, statistically, it's, 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 it's a low <laughs> percentage bet that you're going to graduate college. The, well, the high percentage is that you're old that, Yeah, well, that's, definitely, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, you that's forgot the other side of it. <laughs> One of the things that I read just before coming to do the show tonight was that uh, there may be a dismantling of the education department, which would mean it would be that responsibility would be returned to the states as opposed to Trump being, has said he would get rid so of the Department of Education. And it was only created when Carter came in the office, I mm -hmm. believe. Yeah. Um, some certain aspects of it, I think, would be would or uh, 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 might be decent. I wouldn't necessarily have to get rid of the whole department. You need whatever needs to be decentralized in a in an administrative uh, sense. You can do in a regulatory sense. It'd be a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but what you, do they do? I mean, well, federal does, funding well, what, what is does, like two well, percent well, on the what, local level, right? What, what does any federal department do? <laughs> what does Interior do? That yeah. could be done. <laughs> what, what's, what does Department of State True. do? And they just farm out their contracts, yeah. you know. But education, yeah. you know, we, our biggest property tax bill goes to our local schools. So the school board mm -hmm. decides pretty much everything, and 50% of the funding comes from our property tax. Another, well, 48% mm -hmm. and 48% come from the state, and there's like 4% comes from, I guess, the federal uh, Department of Education. Um, so they don't really do so so much, and yeah, he could probably save two percent, get rid of the department, and localize it. Um, you know, uh, I think it, it it depends. We have to see what they do. I believe in some regulation, but you know, we tried to do this Common Core thing, and, nah, and people stupid. seem to that's be against dumb. it. But I just say, well, how do we evaluate one school from another if you don't have some common test? But I don't think they even do that. So yeah, um, the Common Core is yeah. irrelevant. Uh, it doesn't do anything. Th that then, yeah, get rid of them and let the let the local uh, ISDs take care of it. One thing I think we all can agree on: these are truly exciting times, aren't they? Yeah, that's what I'm excited is that people are talking politics. 
Mm-hmm. Although I tried to tell one guy who I voted for, and he was like, "Shh, shh." I'm like, "Dude, really?" But <laughs> like, really? And we, and it, but it, he, he was he was telling me one good thing that Hillary did, and I was like, "That's all you got? Mm-hmm. You can't give me nothing." But I'm excited that people like I'm getting on the train in the morning. And I'm talking to maybe one or two people. We're talking about this. Yeah. We're talking about God. We're talking about politics. Even, even the protesters. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of. Well, some which one? The ones that actually sh- in me. are from yeah. there. The ones that are shipped in. <laughs> which ones are you talking about? Because you know, I mean, I, it, th- that's the exciting part. Is yeah. that this is an opportunity for public discourse. Yeah. This is like, dude, uh, d- excluding the founding fathers and their. Uh, tacit endorsement of slavery. This is what these people did. You know, yep. we, we got this a chance they, to be involved yeah. in something. Right. Something. Yeah. Yep. At least it's, it's having a discussion. Not just happening it without us. Yep. Exactly. Yep. I think the protest is a little premature because he hasn't done anything. You know, it's all based on his feeling and things that he said, but yeah. let's wait until they need a time he has out. some action. And, uh, <laughs> they need yeah. a time out. <laughs> 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 need to go in the corner and just have a, you know, have a time. I would get a good nap. You like to do in kindergarten and get up and get going. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this doesn't affect my job prospects. No, I just want to. I'm a comedian. No. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of funny to me, though, because they've always said, I'm surprised, and I've been expecting, I say, I wonder if they can get some kind of fool to file up to enjoy the uh, inauguration. So what? A fool? Found an injunction again. <laughs> well, there's people stupid enough to do a lot of things in America, unfortunately. B- b- but uh, at this point, I'm, I'm going to continue to have hope, not blind hope that everyone's nice and kind and there's no hate or racism, mm-hmm. but hope that you can build something better. I just yeah. hope that we can begin to get some problems solved and make some yeah. people's, li- people's mm-hmm. lives but better. It's, that's why the people have to have the pressure. You have to apply pressure. You have to write somebody. You have to go somewhere. I'm like, okay, well, what do, what do I need to do? What can I do given my line of work? What can, you know, tell me, do something. I don't care what you do. Just do something to help somebody because that's what, oh. isn't that what, what the country is about? What are you I supposed mean, to be? I believe our time is almost is. up, fellas. I, I think it is already up, isn't it? <laughs> I, didn't I, want, I want to thank you guys mm-hmm. for coming down. Sure. Okay. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. For real. Anytime. All right, brother. All right, brother. Good to see you. Yeah.